Today I'd like to show you these rotary stripping tools which are commonly used to strip and prepare RG6 coaxial cable for TV antennas, satellite dishes, and cable TV. I have a couple of these here and generally speaking these are inexpensive. You can find them online pretty easily. These will give you the required two-step cut in order to prepare RG6 coaxial cable to receive a connection of some kind, whether it is a compression connector, crimp connector, or a twist on, or even a push on. And that two-step cut that I mentioned a minute ago, in order to get that set correctly, this tool does require a little bit of adjustment. And that's what I wanna show you today. There's a little red insert here that pops out and it has numbers on it. And these numbers correspond to different types of coaxial cable starting here this six means rg6 cable the eight is for rg58 coaxial cable and this is for rg59 coaxial cable and this d is for smaller diameter wire you can see the notch is very small for that now what you do is to put this in the tool you're going to line it up with this black arrow right here so the number that is set in the bottom right corner here that corresponds to the type of uh, type of cable that you're using so you would orient this little insert this way for rg6 cable and if you wanted to use it for a smaller cable like rg59 you would flip it around and that little arrow would be pointing at the nine for rg59 but most commonly this is set for rg6 now these tools almost universally come with a little Allen wrench or a hex key, however you want to call it. And that is used to adjust these little set screws right here. And what these do is adjust the depth of the blades inside the tool. And the depth of these blades has to be just right so that you're not cutting away too much material on the cable. You don't want to cut too deep. You also don't want to cut too shallow because then you're going to have to repeat the cuts and it just gets messy. So if you look closely inside here, you can see there's one blade right here. And on the other side of the tool, if I flip it over, the other blade is right here. And it's got a little tiny notch in it right there. The blades are adjusted by using this little hex key to turn these set screws here and turning them clockwise moves the blades closer to this red notch here, which means you're going to get a deeper cut and turning them counterclockwise will move them out. Let's see if I just press that down a bit, it'll move back out. Now, what you want to do here is set these so that the first blade with the notch here is cutting all the way through to your center conductor, but you don't want it to cut into the center conductor. So you really got to be careful to set this to the right depth. And the other blade on the other side here, this blade right here, you can see the edge of it there. That one has to cut only through the outer insulation jacket to expose the braided shielding if that is set too deeply you're going to cut all that braided shielding off you don't want to do that either here's a situation that might arise if the blades on this tool are not properly adjusted let's try to make a cut here we'll just set the cable in so it's just a little bit past that lip and finger in the loop and just turn it you can hear it grinding through all of the strands of insulation. Now, there's the first problem. The first blade here with a little tiny notch there was not set deep enough and the dielectric did not come off of the center conductor. That's the first problem. We'll just leave that on there for now. And here, the other blade was set way too deep and did not only cut right through the white jacket on the outside of the cable, but it cut away most of the braided shielding. So those are two major mistakes you want to avoid. 
the first blade with little notch has to be set just deep enough to cut all of this dielectric away. I can twist that off there. That's not a very good cut though. And this next blade here has to be set just deep enough so that it cuts only through this outer jacket and leaves all those braids behind. So this tool needs to be adjusted. Sometimes it takes a few tries to get this set up. You might have to make a few test cuts and that's fine. Let's try it again now. Okay, first cut came out okay. Now let's see how that insulation comes off. Actually very well. So all the strands are left there. And that's really what you want. And then once the blades are properly adjusted, you should be able to make repeated cuts that look like this. Place the cable in the tool and just set the end of the cable so it's just a little bit past that uh, lip right there. You can always trim the conductor later if you have to. And just put your finger in the loop and just turn a few times. Now, at this point, some people might be inclined to just take the tool and rip all the insulation off. I think that's a bad idea because what you can do there is prematurely dull the blades or even bend them, and then you're not going to get very good cuts. The tool's not going to last as long. So take it off, remove the first piece that exposes your center conductor that carries the TV signal and then removing the outer jacket. You can see that came off with no strands at all. Okay. And all of the braided insulation strands are still there. And what you're going to do now is just push those back carefully out of the way. You want those to be pushed right back over top of the jacket. And the reason for this is because you don't want one of these braided, little braided uh, shielding strands to touch the center conductor of your cable because that could actually short out the signal or degrade it. So make sure those are out of the way. And once those are all pushed back and your conductor is clean, this cable is now ready for a connector. If you're using an outdoor connection, it should be a compression connection. If you are doing an indoor connection and you're a DIYer, you could probably get away with a twist on connection, a push on, or even a crimp on. If you have the compression tool, then the compression connection is definitely the best, but there are a few options there depending on what kind of tools you have available to you. And that's how you use one of these little coaxial cable stripping tools. If you want to learn about putting connectors on the ends of coaxial cable, compression, crimp, twist on, and push on, look in the description. There's a list of videos there I've made on that topic.